Good Monday morning, fifth grade. How are you? We hope you had a great weekend. This is the second yes. week of digital learning. Are you ready to get started? Let's go. All right. So today we're talking about compare and contrast. So we have, let me share my screen with you. We are going to read today about polar bears, and then we're going to compare the two um, passages that we read. We've done this um, a couple of times in class. We did it about hurricanes, if you remember, and we also did it about sharks. So today we're going to read about polar bears, and then we'll compare the two passages. Here we go. So I'm going to read first, and Miss Landers and I, we will take turns. All right. Par polar bears are the largest land predators in the world. An adult male polar bear can weigh over 1,400 pounds. Whoa, that is a lot. Polar bears spend most of their lives in the sea ice of the Arctic Ocean. Polar bears live in the coldest parts of the world and they are well adapted to the frigid environment. They depend on the ocean for their food and habitat. Polar bears are the only bear species to be, species to be considered marine mammals. All right, your turn. Time to eat. Polar bears eat mostly seals. They are sneaky predators. They wait at the seal's breathing hole. When the seal surfaces to get air, the polar bear is ready to catch their dinner. Polar bears also swim under the sea ice to hunt. Okay, good. Well, oh, give me good pat paddling polar bears. Do you want me to do that? Nope, I can do it. Okay. All right. Paddling polar bears. Polar bears have bodies that are built for swimming and diving. Their paws are slightly webbed. Webbed means they have a slight um, piece of skin right here so that helps them to swim better, okay? Um, slightly webbed, which they use to paddle. They can swim for hundreds of miles from the land, but they also like to float on the sea ice. Their blubber allows them to float also, and it also keeps them warm. So blubber is like fat. Polar bear's fur helps them to blend into the snowy surroundings. The white color helps them to sneak up on their prey. The fur and blubber also hold in heat to keep their bodies warm. Did you know that polar bear's fur isn't really white? It is actually translucent. Uh, do you know what translucent means? Ms. Yes. It means you can see through it. That's right, that's right. Translucent means that you can see through it. This means that it allows light to pass through. It only appears to be white because it is reflecting the visible light. Beneath all that thick fur, their skin is jet black. That's wow. Very, that's very interesting, yeah. Let me um, open this so that we can go on to the next page. Okay. So, all right. So, snow dens. Okay, polar, polar bear cubs are born during the months of November and December. They stay in their snow den for three months. They cuddle and curl into a ball to stay warm. Inside the snow den, they are protected from wind and predators. Their mother protects and feeds them. Okay, very good. So now we're going to move on to polar bear problems. That's the title of this one. Polar bear problems. The polar bear population. Polar bears are the largest car land carnivores in the world. So we talked about what is a carnivore before. So do you know what a carnivore is, Mrs. Landers? It's a meat eater. Eater. Okay, good. So it animals that you meat. Right. Yeah. There are currently between 20,000 and 25,000 polar bears living in the Arctic today. Um, their population has decreased a lot. Scientists believe that this is because the planet is warming up faster than any other time in history. Polar bears are meant to live in the frigid Arctic climate. How does climate change affect polar bears? The Arctic is in the northernmost part of the world and it is very cold there. It is covered in ice for most of the year. Polar bears depend on ice, on sea ice to survive. During the summer, there will be less ice. Polar bears will have to go to the land to eat berries and plants. However, this is not enough food for the polar bears to survive on all year. Okay, less sea ice leads to starvation. Climate change is causing big problems for polar bears. The ice is breaking up sooner in the spring and forming later in the fall. This forces the polar bears to walk or to swim longer distances to get any um, remaining ice. Polar bears are usually still hunters. This means that they don't move a lot to the hunt. 
um, they may crouch next to a seal's breathing hole in the ice and wait for hours for their prey. If there is less ice, they may have to walk or swim to find a food source. This can burn huge amounts of energy. This energy should be stored during times when there is less food available. Why is the ice melting? Scientists believe that one... Oh, sorry about that. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> Scientists believe that one cause for the ice melting is due to climate change. The climate is getting warmer and warmer. Scientists believe that the earth goes through periods of warmer and colder climates. Some scientists also believe that humans are causing the climate to become warmer. Our daily activity using cars and operating machinery can give off gases. Scientists think the fumes and gases that go into the air trap heat in the atmosphere. Over time, this has caused the earth to become much warmer. As a result, the ice is melting more than usual. Animals like polar bears that depend on cold habitats will have a difficult time surviving. Okay, good. Oil drilling in the Arctic. Remember, these are called subtitles. These subtitles are very important because when you get to the question, it'll ask you something about drilling, and you'll know to look back under the subtitle, oil drilling in the Arctic. Oil is a natural resource found deep inside the Earth's surface. It takes a lot of work and machinery to extract the oil from um, so deep inside the Earth. We use the oil for many things in our daily life, such as gas um, for our cars and electricity. The environmental groups have fought off oil rigs in the Arctic Refuge for a long time. However, the U.S. Geological Survey estimates that the plane holds... Um, 10.4 billion bar barrels of oil. The government wants to allow drilling here because it would create more jobs and more money. In 2017, the government approved drilling in some parts. The Arctic Refuge Coastal Plain is the home and sanctuary to a large number of animals. This includes the world's most vulnerable polar bears. The Southern Beaufort Sea Populace, about three-fourths of the coastal plain is a critical habitat for these polar bears. How does oil drilling affect the polar bears? Disturbed bear dens. Part of drilling for oil includes seismic testing. Seismic testing is a very disruptive activity. In the coastal plain, it will require big heavy trucks that drive across the snow-covered tundra. The equipment vibrates and produces noisy blasts. If denning polar bears are disturbed, mother bears may exit the den prematurely with their cubs. This will expose the cubs to the extreme elements and decrease their survival rates. Cubs could also be abandoned. Okay, good. Freezing polar bears. Unfortunately, oil spills sometimes happen. If a polar bear becomes in contact with oil, it can reduce the insulating effect of the pair's fur. This will require them to use more energy to get warm. Poison polar bears. Po polar bears are especially sensitive to oil spills because they search for food in holes and broken ice. This is where oil builds up. If a polar bear accidentally eats oil, then it can cause them to be very sick and even die. Okay, so how can we help? Polar bears are facing many problems in their natural home. We can help them by cutting down the amount of gases that heat our atmosphere. We can drive cars less often and use less electricity and buy fewer things that are made in factories. Okay, so that is the story. And now let's look at the questions. So it says polar bears. So we know that we're gonna find the um, answer to this question under polar bears. So number one, part A, based on the information in this text, how do polar bears fur help them adapt to the environment? Is it A, their fur keeps them protected from predators B, the fur helps them hunt and stay warm. C, their fur helps them float and stay warm. Or D, their fur helps them to float and swim. So like I've taught you in the past, you don't just guess. You go back up to polar bears and we're going to look for the answer. Okay, let's look back in the first paragraph. They can even read the questions first down there below and then come back up and find the answer too. Yes, that's, that is true. All right, so we know it's on this page. Tell me if you see it, Mrs. Landers. So we know this is about time to eat. Okay. This one's about paddling. And I think that we read polar bear's fur helps them to blend right. into snowy surroundings. So blending in, mm -hmm. the white color helps them to sneak up and on their prey. It also holds in heat. Okay, and the fur and the blubber hold into heat. So let's see if that answered our question. Which one do you think it is? 
helps them to float and swim. No. Right. No, right here. Well, is it A, B, C, or D? Stay warm. And which one? What? And helps them float and stay warm. Okay, helps them to float and stay warm. Okay. So in part B, it says support your answer by using the evidence from the text. And we went back and that is exactly what we did. We went back and we looked for the answer in the text. Very good. Okay. So, and then we already answered this question, but number two says, what does translucent mean? So we said invisible, but, and so it does mean invisible, but it means, um, that we said it. you can see through it. Right. Okay. We said that it can see through. It's not invisible. I'm sorry. That's right. You can see through it. So that would be what? Would it be white, invisible, doesn't allow light to pass through, or it does allow light to pass through? It does allow light to pass through like in a window. A yes. window is lucent. Yes. Okay. All right. And number three, what is the meaning of still hunter as used in the passage? We're under polar bear problems. So let's go back up to polar bear problems. Tell me when you see it. Yeah, right here. Uh, oh, did I miss it? Yes. Keep going right there. Polar bear problems right there. It's that whole big heading. Then it has subheadings okay. underneath. Okay, polar bear problems. Gotcha. All right, so what was the question? Um, still hunters. Okay, the question is, what is the meaning of a still hunter? So we need to find that. Something about a still hunter. So you guys be looking as we are, because we are we are doing this with you. Um, okay, right see. here, right here. Polar bears are usually still hunters. This means that they don't move a lot to hunt. They may crouch next to the seal's breathing hole in the ice and wait for hours on their prey. So there's where I found the answer. So let's go back to the question. And the question is, what is the meaning of a still hunter? So what is it, Miss Slanders? It still hunter is somebody who doesn't, they don't move around a lot, just like what we would, if I would tell you to be still, same thing. They don't move around a lot so that they, um, they don't um, call attention to themselves. Okay, perfect. All right, and number four, which sentence states a point made by the author in the text? Oil spills can impact polar bears in negative ways. Is that true? Yes. That is true, but let's see if that's the best answer. Oil spills can impact polar bears in positive ways. Did it talk about a positive way? No. no. Oil spills and climate change won't be around for much longer. Did it say that, Ms. Landers? No. Oh. And D says oil spills are a bigger problem than climate change. Did it say that? Um, no. No. So the answer is A. So do you see how we use process of elimination to mark up the answers that we knew for sure were not it? Okay. And right. that's how we landed on A. All right. B. Which two sentences from the text provide evidence for the answer in part A? So is it, if a polar bear, so we're picking two sentences this time. If a polar bear comes in contact with oil, it can reduce the insulating effect of the bear's fur. Is that true? That is yes. true. It did say that. Okay. B, part of the drilling for oil includes seismic testing. Does that have anything? That is true, but does it have anything to do with what we learned about in part A? No. No, it doesn't. Okay. If a polar bear accidentally eats oil, then it can cause them to get very sick and even die. Is that true? Did we read that? Say, it didn't say that he would die. They would die. Yeah, it did. Oh, it did? Okay. It said, and it said they can even die. Yeah, it, it okay. did say that. Okay, so see, I didn't get that. Okay, so D says, unfortunately, oil spills sometimes happen. That's true, but that has nothing to do with this. And then, right. however, the U.S. Geological Survey estimates that the plane holds 10.4 billion barrels of oil. Okay, that too is true, but it still has nothing to do right. with the main point that oil spills can impact bears in negative ways so the answers are going to be a and c and c yes okay good all right use the information in the text polar bears and polar bear problems to place the descriptions in the correct section of this venn diagram so which um we have to pick out 
of these paragraphs, did, it, did, it, did they talk about it in polar bears or in polar bear problems or in both? So which one shares details about how polar bears depend on their frigid environment? Um, so shares let's go back up under yeah. polar bears. We need to look one more time. Yes. Is this talking? Oh, it says frigid environment right here mm -hmm. in the first okay. paragraph. Okay, good. So let's look on this page and see if we see anything about frigid environment. Talk about starvation. And you can look a lot at the subheadings and get an idea. Yes, that's good. Okay, so I don't see anything. Do you? No. no. Okay, so I'm going to say that this first one shares details about um, the polar bears, goes here under polar bears. Right describes how their blubber and paws help them float that would be in what let me look at the third one first helps helps the reader helps. understand that polar bear problems would be the third one and the both of them talk about how their blubber and paws help them float is what i think okay so this one uh for sure is polar bear problems and yes. describe how their blubber and paws help them float let's go back up and look um, okay this one's the oil this is all about oil drilling arctic um freezing polar bears oh wait this one says about um the frigid environment oh we missed that see okay so that's so. what you have to do. You have to go back and make sure you look and find the answers correctly. Um, because a lot of times you will miss it. I mean, because I saw the word up here, frigid yeah. environment. Do you see it? it says frigid environment. Right. Okay. But what is the question? Shares details about polar bears and depend on their frigid environment. So it's both. So right. the frigid environment would be in the both. middle. Yes. It goes in the middle. Okay, and so blubber and paws would have to be polar about, bears. Because that's not a problem with them. Right, really. because that's not the problem. Okay, fantastic. That was great. That was good teamwork. Okay, good job, Mrs. Landers. All right, so we did that together, and I hope that you wrote down your answers on a piece of notebook paper. And if you didn't, you can look back over this and do that on your own time. Um, you'll just number it and write your answers. We've put in here an IXL practice for you, so you can get on here and do this. Remember, we try to get all of our IXLs to at least 90%, um, and it's on comparing and contrasting. And then we have one more thing for you to do today for reading and writing. And Mrs. Landers is gonna talk about this for you. Okay, so we are going to do a, um, kind of like a five paragraph um, essay of your choice. The main idea, of course, that says polar bears face many problems in their Arctic habit. That's going to be the first, that's gonna be your intro, introduction, paragraph, your hook. Remember, one way we can hook the audience is asking a question or um, saying, stating some kind of fact about that. So you might wanna go back up in your reading and see if you can hook the reader by stating a fact about polar bears face many problems in the Arctic habit. Maybe, maybe pick one of those. And then you can either do main idea number one with its supporting facts or main idea number two. And I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna act like you're picking main idea number one. So in main idea number one, it says one problem the polar bears face is climate change. So the next three paragraphs, just like we did our last essay, um, you have to take each one of those supporting details like climate change is when the earth goes through periods of warmer temperature caused by human activities and naturally warmer period. You have got to put that, make that into a paragraph. Look up in your reading, get the um, information and make it into a five to seven sentence paragraph. This, then you'll go to your second paragraph. Uh, you'll have your intro. Remember, that's one paragraph. And then when I'm talking about the ones in the middle, it's the three in the middle, like we've talked about, like kind of like a sandwich. And then the one, the second one in the middle will be warmer temperatures cause sea ice to melt. So you will put that somewhere in your talk about warmer temperatures that cause the sea ice to melt. So look up in your reading for that again. And then the last paragraph will be polar bears have less access to food, which leads to starvation. So you look back up in your reading for some more information, or you can go on the World Wide Web to find that out also. And then remember, your conclusion or your last paragraph will be 
you will tie all of that together and you will talk about the polar bear population has been being threatened by climate change and oil drilling. But please remember to include some of your support things you put in your supporting details to tie it all together. Use um, very vivid um, words, adjectives, and you can also um, make sure you don't copy word for word. Remember what we, I've talked to you all about using your own, putting it in your own words. So if you have any questions about that, you can email me, okay? Okay, that sounds great. That was a great lesson today about polar bears. Polar bears are my favorite animal. What about you? Uh, I love polar bears. They're I so cute. The little baby ones too. They used yeah. to have polar bears at the Tulsa Zoo, but they, I don't know if they died or what happened to them. Then maybe they moved them to Oklahoma City or something, but I haven't seen them in years, but I love polar bears. I think they might be kind of mean though. <laughs> oh, well, we don't, we're not going to talk about that part. We didn't, we don't know about that part. <laughs> yeah, we didn't learn about that, did we? <laughs> okay, well, you guys have a great evening and I can't wait See to you read later. your essays. Yeah, me either. All bye. right, bye.